Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ragefire Magda Floga. This is a Rarity 8 hammer that you can build with parts from Zora Magdaros. Now the closest competitor to the Ragefire Magda Floga in my opinion is the Empress May Sticks. I've been told that the Empress May Sticks Lunostra Hammer is a better hammer than the Ragefire Magda Floga. Probably it has something to do with the default white sharpness bar having 30% more affinity having an extra large decoration slot, and coming with the razor sharp skill. All those things combined are probably giving Empress May Sticks a little bit of an edge. I'm not quite sure how much better it is than the Rage Fire Magna Floga. Uh, you know, I haven't actually tested Empress May Sticks myself, so I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I've been told the Empress May Sticks is a better option. So I'll just run with that for now. We'll see how I feel about it later when I take a look at it. So, as usual, I always talk a little bit about the cosplay build. You'll notice I'm wearing the full Zora Magduro set. It's terrible, right? I'd love to have critical status, but on a different armor set. I don't know about you guys. It sounds like a really cool armor set bonus, but it's like, I can't justify building Zora Magduro's armor just for this one uh, skill, right? And I actually did, believe it or not, I actually did try to optimize a build that used critical status with this hammer. It was just terrible. The big problem, the, well, let me explain. The reason that the uh, Floga hammer does not pair well with the critical status armor set skill is because it's based on how many critical hits you land, right? And the Floga hammer, it, it comes with negative 20% affinity. So you're really working against it. And the fact that the armor set, the Zora Magdaros armor set, doesn't have a lot of level two decoration slots. It means you have trouble building weakness exploit and maximum might, uh, as well as you know something like crit eye would be another option. But there's just no way to get crit eye onto the build. So yeah, it, it wasn't that impressive. Maybe in the future we'll have I don't know. Wouldn't it be cool if we had like the Gamma Zora Magdaros set and it was just like OP, right? We'll see. Maybe we'll do something like that. It would be kind of cool, I think. If they were, I don't even know what that would look like. Can you imagine a fight against Zora Magdaros that was difficult? <laughs> right? He's such a he's such a strange monster. You don't really fight him. Moving right along, we have my No Decorations build, which I think has been really popular. I've gotten a lot of good feedback about this. Basically, what I try to do is I put together as good of a build as I can using No Decorations. I'm allowing myself one attack boost decoration. I've been told that the main storyline gives you one attack decoration, but in this case, it doesn't really even affect the build, so I didn't have to show it off. Uh, but basically, take a look at what I'm doing. Handicraft 5, that's to get that blue sharpness bar right, and you'll probably have to sharpen your weapon once, maybe twice throughout the fight. I kind of experimented with some other styles like maybe protective polish stuff like that uh, but I liked handicraft 5 it's just so easy to build then we got weakness exploit 3 and then we've got blast attack 2 crit boost 2 and maximum might 2 okay so I really tried to just get as much as I could onto the build that made sense for the build Next, I want to show you a build that's just for fun. This is kind of like an ailment build that takes advantage of the Diablos armor set skill. It's called Bludgeoner. The way Bludgeoner works is basically when you're losing sharpness on your weapon, you lose out on a damage multiplier. That's how it works, right? Well, with the Bludgeoner skill, you don't lose out on as much. So you're still going to do less, but it's really not as bad as it would be. And the way it kind of ends up working out is the green sharpness bar does almost as much as a blue sharpness bar. So on this build, what I've done is I've actually built Bludgeoner, and then I don't worry about Handicraft at all. And since I'm not worrying about Handicraft, I've got a whole bunch of open decoration slots that I get to fill with other skills. So check it out. Here's what I got going on. I got Blast 3. I know some of you guys are going to pick this hammer up and go, I just want to make things explode. So Blast 3, Weakness Exploit 3, of course, Slugger 3. So here we got Blast Attack and Slugger, and then right after Slugger, Stamina Thief. So this is triple ailments on the monster. Now I tried this out. In my opinion, it's not very good against any Elder Dragon. I tried it over and over again. It was just a slower version of my best optimized build, right? But the build is actually pretty fun if you bring it out against threat level 1 and threat level 2 monsters. So if you know, you know you're going to go fight something like, oh, there's a whole bunch of threat level 2 monsters like Rathalos, Azura Rathalos, uh, Uragon, Odegaran. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. If you're going to go fight them, you can bring this for fun, especially if you know it's going to be a little more of a drawn out fight. Like uh, I just mentioned Uragon, he's kind of a longer fight. So you bring something like this setup, it can be a lot of fun. But other than that, again, I wouldn't really use this against an Elder Dragon. On top of that, I want to mention for your gear, if you do end up using this, bring the Apothecary Mantle. And then I put the Apothecary Mantle on and I try to cause as much ailment buildup as I can on the monster. 
it's just an experiment. Go give it a try. You know, tell me if you liked it. Uh, I thought it was just okay. <laughs> Let's move on to talking about my optimized build. So this build assumes you have all the decorations in the game and you can build as good as you can and the goal is to be as efficient as possible. And here's what I came up with. I've got crit I5, right? Because we're really trying to counteract that negative affinity. Uh, Handicraft 5, once again, of course. Crit Boost 3. So with Crit Boost, since you're taking it all the way to 3, what you're really assuming is that you can get your affinity pretty high, like at least past 60, right? Then you've got Weakness Exploit 3, right? So this is important. And Maximum Might 3. So we've got a whole bunch of affinity going on in this build. We've got the Crit Boost and the Handicraft giving us a little more damage because of the blue sharpness bar, right? Everything else on the build is unimportant. One of the sad things I want to say about the optimized build is... Uh, you know, no room for more blast damage. I think that's kind of sad. Even with the new Lunastra armor, I tried out various combinations and I just couldn't get it so that I wasn't trading off more affinity. That's the sad part. Like right now, I could I could get rid of crit eye and put on blast, but then I'm not getting in more crit damage. And the fact that I have crit boost, that's really bad because I invested in getting more crit damage, right? So I really should be maximizing my affinity until I get it all the way up to 100 if it's possible to get it to 100% correct so yeah no blast attack on this build I, this and you know what it's not even that big of a deal it really isn't because if you're using your hammer appropriately you're not going to cost blast that often and blast doesn't do that much damage anyways in my opinion again feel free to disagree with me on that issue but yeah i don't feel like it's that important so this was the best build i took it out it felt you know, exactly like you might expect it to feel. It wasn't as strong as the Diablo's hammer, but it looked better, and that's what this video is all about. This is all about fashion, right? That's why we're taking a look at the Ragefire Magdafloga, because I could have just jumped right over to the Lunastra hammer and picked that one out instead, but no, we want to work on this one. For combat tips, there aren't a lot of monsters that have like three star weakness to blast. A lot of the monsters have two star weakness, which is kind of nice anyways. But yeah, like Valhazak, Blast 2, Stun 2. Kushala de Or is like the only one that has three star weakness to blast. And then after that, you have to go way down to like the, the pushover monsters and you get, who is this? Uh, Radoban, like, <laughs> Radoban's easy, right? Like, if you're having any trouble with Radoban, Blast isn't going to matter. He's not going to change, that's not going to change it, right? So just, just, uh, Kushala de Aura has that three-star weakness, so I would just use this monster against whoever you want to use it against. However, if you want to be smart about it, I would probably avoid any monster that has a one-star weakness to Blast. It looks like that includes Kulf Teroth, Teostra, Azura Rathalos, Lava Seath, Basil Gues, Pink Raytheon, Dodogama, Rathalos, and that's it. That's all of the that's all of the threat level two monsters. I don't even worry about the threat level one monsters. They're all pushovers. So yeah. So you'll you probably want to avoid those monsters if you don't want to bother with the monster that only has a one star weakness to blast. Uh, you know, if you really just wanted to optimize your damage, you'd probably just bring the Diablo Shatterer. I have a video on that, of course. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to watch that. But yeah, if you're trying to like optimize your damage, focus on Kushala de Aura at least. And then there's a number of monsters that have like a two-star weakness to blast. That's not bad. Uh, <laughs> that's just how it is. Uh, hopefully you found this video informative. Let's talk a little bit about the tier rating for this weapon. I think this weapon definitely has to have an A- minus tier rating. It's a, it's a harder hitting hammer right but the problem is it's actually got a competitor for what it does the empress may sticks right so it's not even quite the best in its if you want to call it ailment archetype so you actually have another hammer that's probably going to be doing a better job and then it's definitely not s tier it's not a meta setter by any means uh this is just this is just a decent hammer that looks really cool so i hope you guys consider using it all right let me know what weapon you guys want to see next thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time